Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the beginning of your yoga journey. It's day number six, so today we will focus on the seated asanas. Again, not all seated asanas, but in my opinion, some of the most important ones. So we'll talk about the different movements of the spine, like forward bending, back bending, twisting and lateral stretching. And we will also open the hips. Today we won't need a long warm-up. It's more about stretching, flexibility and relaxation. So let's still start with a short meditation or with a short breathing exercise. So come into a comfortable seated position. This could be cross-legged or any other position you would like to choose. Maybe a kneeling position, a child's pose. Maybe you want to sit on a block so your back is more straight. And whenever you're ready, close your eyes. If you don't want to close your eyes, just gaze into a point or gaze to a point in front of you. If you're in a seated position, roll your shoulders up to your ears, back, and then relax. And try to focus on your body, on your breathing. How are you feeling in this moment? Is there any tightness? Maybe in your shoulders, in your face, in any other parts of your body. If you can find any tension, then try to let go with every exhale. Also try to observe your body. Maybe you can also feel any changes from the last five days. Maybe in special parts of your body, in your hips or your hamstrings, in your spine. Maybe it's already easier for you to sit up straight. Also lengthen the spine a little bit more. And how the last five days of this yoga program has changed your mind. Maybe you are calmer, more relaxed. Try to feel or become aware of all the benefits. It's always good to set an intention or to remind yourself why you're doing certain things. And then before we start with the asana practice, take three more deep breaths. On the inhale, lengthen the spine. Bring air into the abdomen, to your chest, up to your shoulders. On the exhale, feel free to open your mouth, relax your face, your jaw, the point between your eyebrows. Two more breaths in your own pace. And gently open your eyes. All right, so now we start with the asana practice. As I mentioned before, we won't need a real warm-up, so we don't even need a wrist warm-up today. But we will do cat and cow movement because this is just such a beautiful way to do something well for the spine. So your hands in shoulder distance, your legs in hip distance, spread your fingers, index fingers facing forward. On the inhale, tilt your pelvis, lift the chest, look up. On the exhale, chin to your chest, round your spine. Really straighten the arms. Inhale, tilt the pelvis to create this little back bend. Really lift the chest and slightly look up. On the exhale, imagine there's a hand in between your shoulder blades you're trying to press away. Make sure your wrists are underneath your shoulders. Do five more rounds in your own rhythm. So this is also something we have to learn, or we can learn, we have the chance to learn in our yoga practice, is to move with the rhythm of our breath. In our own pace, also if you're in a yoga class, you don't have to always do what the person to the left or to the right is doing. Always do what is good to your body. Find your own pace, especially in your home studio if you're practicing at home. Of course, your practice always your pace. 
and then come back into neutral position. We will start with a back bend, really simple one, really comfortable one, and should be really nice for your spine. So coming into a Sphinx pose, we are laying on the belly. Place your forearms in shoulder distance, so they are parallel to each other, and you can completely relax your feet, your legs, your buttocks. Just important that you lift the chest up and you take any tension from your shoulders. Feel free to close your eyes to bring the awareness to your breath. And this practice could also be compared with yin yoga. Not all parts because we will also actively stretch and yin yoga is more passive stretching. But after this program you are ready for all my classes on my channel. So make sure to also check out the yin yoga, make it part of your well-being routine. This will help you to calm down, to relax and also improve your flexibility. Here in the Sphinx pose, if you want to feel more sensations in your lower back, you could walk your hands a little bit forward and then push yourself up a little bit more. Keep your face relaxed and take five more breaths. Last deep inhale, exhale slowly release. Place the hands beside your chest, put yourself back into a child's pose, the resting pose if you remember. So sitting on the heels, you could decide if you bring the arms to the sides to just rest, but I would suggest you, <laughs> because there is not much we have to rest now, to keep the arms forward, keep the arms straight, press the hands into the mat, you can relax your neck, also place the forehead on the mat if you want. Really press the hands into the mat. Three deep breaths here. One. With every exhale, soften your face, the areas around your eyes, your forehead. Two. And three. And then slowly come up. Shift your weight to the side and straighten your legs. So after this back bend, we will now do a forward bend. It's called Paschimottanasana. And there are different ways to do it. So I will explain it a little bit to you because this is uh, the beginning. So we have to talk about it a little bit. There are different ways to use props. You could also use a towel or a belt if you would like to, but I want to design this program that it's possible to do without any props. So if you can't reach your toes, which is not problem at all at the moment, we will work on that, then there are different ways to do the asana without using props. So option one is to just place the hands on your thighs and you try to sit as straight as possible. This will also be very challenging, so already enough if you can't touch your toes and this is maybe your very first seated asana you're ever doing. So option number two, if you can't reach your toes, you could also bend your knees, but then you won't stretch your hamstrings because your knees are bent. There are two reasons why you're doing this asana. Reason number one is to stretch the hamstrings and reason number two is to lengthen the spine and to do this forward bend. So if you bend your knees, no stretch in the hamstrings, but still you're doing something good for your spine. I teach this more in the way that you keep the legs straight and you focus more on the hamstring stretch than on the forward bend. So if you can't reach your toes, you could also place the hands on your shin, straighten the spine and on the exhale you slowly move forward. So just a little bit, not like this, so the back should be straight. If you're not sure, always feel free to grab a towel or a strap and to pull yourself forward with a straight spine. All right, so straighten the legs. Whenever you're ready on the inhale, lift your arms up and on the exhale, lean forward and try to catch your feet. If you can't reach your feet, choose one of the other two options. Before we push ourselves deeper, pull ourselves deep actually, we lengthen the spine and on the exhale, lean forward. 
This might be really intense in your hamstrings, but that's good. This is an area we really need to stretch because this also affects our lower back. So if you have back pain, th the reason could be tight hamstrings. So no bouncing in the asana. We are pulling ourselves deeper on every exhale until you find your limit. Keep your shoulders relaxed and stay active in your feet. So you engage your feet that the toes are facing into your direction. This will deepen the stretch in the gastrocnemius and soleus in your calf muscles. You could also try to engage your thighs, your quadriceps, so your hamstrings will be more flexible. This is called reciprocal inhibition. You don't have to remember all these terms. You only have to remember to keep the back straight, to stay active in your feet, and to keep your shoulders relaxed. We stay here for five more breaths. You can do it, even if it's challenging, you can do it. <laughs> Last deep inhale, try to deepen on the exhale, maybe a centimeter, a millimeter more. Inhale, straighten the arms, straighten the back, and exhale, release the pose. So this was Paschimottanasana or forward bend, and now we're doing a twisting asana. So we already have three movements of the spine, the back bend, the forward bend, and the twist. To start the twist, bend the left knee, and place it one palm distance away from your right inner thigh. So that should be placed for one hand. So both femurs, both thigh bones are facing forward. Place the left hand behind your back. Right foot active, because if you would relax your right foot, it would fall to the outside. And we would create an external rotation, which also affects our hips. So stay here active in the right foot. On the inhale, lift the right arm up. On the exhale, place the right elbow on the outside of the left thigh. If you can't place the elbow here, you could also just wrap your arm around. On the inhale, lengthen the spine, suck the belly in, and then we start twisting, not only the head, we're starting from the abdomen. So inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist, abdomen, chest, shoulders, gaze over the shoulder. Inhale, find more length, exhale, twist, inhale, lengthen more, Exhale, twist a little bit more. Do this three more times. Three more breaths here. Without releasing the pulse. So always twisting a little bit more. Last deep inhale. Exhale, twist a little bit more. Inhale, look to the front. Exhale, release the pose. So all these twisting movements are really good for your lower back to release back pain. Now we're doing the other side, so bending the right knee, one palm distance away from the left inner thigh, left foot active, right hand behind the back, on the inhale, lift the left arm up, on the exhale, left elbow outside right thigh. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, start twisting, abdomen, chest, shoulders, gaze over the shoulder. Inhale, find more length, exhale, twist. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Three more breaths. Stay active in your left foot. <laughs> Inhale, lengthen more. Exhale, twist. Inhale, look to the front. Exhale, release the pose. And straighten the legs, shake it out. All right, so this was Marichyasana, a twisting asana. Now we are opening up the hips. We want to do a lateral stretch seated. There are not that many asanas that do that, and we already did that in other classes. So let's focus on the hips now. Bring the feet together. Coming into Bada Konasana, or butterfly. You decide how close you want to place your feet to your body. Sometimes it's not possible to bring the feet closer to you, so you can just bring yourself closer to your feet. Two options here, 
hold your feet on the inhale, lengthen the spine. On the exhale, option one is to press the elbows against the inner thighs to bring the knees closer to the mat. And option two is to lean forward. So again, you're pulling yourself forward, but be careful whenever you're pulling yourself. We don't want to actively pull ourselves into a round spine. So keep the chest up and then pull yourself down. Keep your shoulders relaxed, your drishti, your gaze is relaxed, so you could gaze into a point in front of you. Shoulders, face, jaw, forehead, try to release the tension there. This is really good for your hips, for your adductors. Again, on every exhale, we try to deepen. Let's do five more breaths. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, slowly come back up and exhale. We all move into this position so we are sitting alongside the mat because we're coming into this wide legged in this straddle position and it's more comfortable if your heels are on the mat. So in this asana, it's really important that you're not rounding your spine again too much and to stay active in your feet because again, if you relax your feet, you would have a... Um, <laughs> you would have an external rotation. If you can't reach your feet in this pose, it's quite challenging, so just place the hands on your laps or on your shins and try to sit straight. We only stay here for five breaths, so try to manage to lengthen your spine as much as possible. Or you can grab your feet if this is an option for you today. On the inhale, lengthen the spine, and on the exhale, pull yourself down. Engage your quadriceps, stay active in your feet, your shoulders are relaxed, and with every exhale, try to go deeper. Maybe some of you already have the chest on the mat, <laughs> maybe, or probably most of us won't be able to do this. So if your asana looks like this, then just lengthen the spine. It shouldn't be this round back, it should be straight, all right? Two more breaths in whatever depth you are. On the inhale, slowly come back up, on the exhale, release. All right, and then come back into a normal position on your mat. If you want, shake your legs out. And then we all find a laying down position. We will do another back bend now, bridge pose. So place the heels underneath your knees in hip distance apart. Keep your knees parallel. Place the hands beside you, palms facing down. And on the inhale, lift your hips up as high as possible. The whole weight should be here on your shoulders, not on your neck. And if you want, you can interlace your fingers underneath your back and press the hands into the mat. Try to lift your hips up higher. Staying here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release your hands and slowly lower down. So in some of my classes, I will always offer you two options. I will offer you the bridge pose or you can come into a full wheel where you place your hands beside your ears and then you push yourself up. We won't do that now because we need a proper warm-up to do the full wheel. What is really comfortable after this back bend, after bridge pose, is if you bend your knees to your chest, wrap your arms around and now try to touch your forehead to your knees. Engaging your core, this also helps to realign the spine, staying here for five, Four, three, two, and one. Slowly release. To finish the class, 
we will do another twist, a really calm and relaxed one, supine twist. So straighten both legs, bring the right knee to your chest, open arms to the left and to the right in shoulder level, palms facing up. If you want, you could also place the left hand on the outside of the right thigh. Take a deep inhale and on the exhale, lower the right knee to the left and gaze over the opposite shoulder to the right. In this asana, it's really important that your lower back and your upper back are still in one line. So sometimes if we're twisting to the side, our butt is almost at the side of your mat. So just shift your weight back to the center so your butt is still in line with your spine. Gaze over the right shoulder. And it doesn't matter if the right foot or right knee is not touching the mat. It's more important that you keep both shoulders on the mat. And then just relax here. Let your arms be heavy. Relax your shoulders. And then try to do nothing at the moment, to just be without planning, without thinking about the past. Just be fully present. Three more breaths on this side. One more. Deep inhale, exhale, open the mouth, relax your face, and then slowly come back to center, straighten the right leg, bend the left knee to your chest, again open the arms to the sides. If you want, place the right hand on the left, outside of the left thigh, or on the exhale, lower down to the right, and gaze over the left shoulder. You can already feel the difference in your spine, the relaxation. Try to become aware of this twisting asana, the twisting motion in your lower back. Relax your shoulders even more and take three more deep breaths. One more deep inhale and exhale, open the mouth, release. Slowly come back to center, open the feet to the corners of the mat, arms to the sides. And we take five more deep breaths in our final relaxation in Shavasana. Take a deep inhale, feel the rising of the belly, of your chest. On the exhale, open your mouth. Let your legs and arms become heavier. Deep inhale. Fully exhale. Deep inhalation. And slow exhalation. Feel free to stay longer in your Shavasana. And thank you so much for practicing with me today. I hope you have enjoyed this calm and more relaxed class. And I can't wait to practice with you tomorrow for your final day of your seven-day program. We will do your first vinyasa flow. So rest today after this relaxed class. And I see you tomorrow again on the mat. Thank you so much and namaste.